Welcome back to the world of home automation. If you're a human and have electricity, then you probably have one of these. The technology used in these infrared remote controls hasn't changed in like 30 years. I think we're overdue for an update. This is the Broadlink RM Pro, and this is his little brother, the Broadlink RM Mini. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you how to use this to replace this so you can finally integrate your old TV, stereo, or whatever else into your new smart home. If that sounds like something you want in your house, then stick around and I'll show you how it's done. The Pro is able to send and receive both infrared and RF, or 433 megahertz, signals. And it sells for about $35. The Mini, on the other hand, only communicates with infrared controllable devices. And the Mini sells for about $15. Now, if you want to see how a proper Englishman sets up and uses the Broadlink Pro, check out Paul Hibbert. He's been using this thing a lot longer than I have and knows a whole lot more about it than I do. My purpose for using these Broadlink devices is to control my TVs and such with Home Assistant. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. I use the Sonoff RF bridge for my RF devices, but I'll do my best to show you how to use the Broadlink Pro for RF devices also, sort of. The truth is, it doesn't seem like Broadlink wants you to use the Pro for RF devices, but we'll get into that later. To get started with either of these devices, you need to download the app for Android or iPhone because that's how you're going to get them to communicate with your network. By the way, if you look at the reviews for these devices, they're pretty terrible. But most of those negative reviews are because of the app. The good news for us is we're only going to use that app to initially set up the device on your network. After that, you can delete it if you want to. You'll probably never open it again. At least you won't need to. You can if you want to, I guess. For the setup, open the app. You see I already have the RM Pro set up. So let's connect the mini. Click the plus, then add device. It says you should be able to scan a barcode or a QR code. If there was a QR code, I must have thrown it away with the packaging. Oops. I tried scanning the barcode, but that didn't seem to work either. Fortunately, they do give us other options. Just select universal remote and then the mini and then put in your Wi-Fi info. Easy as that. Once that's complete, you're going to need to find the IP address that your network gave your Broadlink device and its MAC address. Both of those things are going to be necessary for your home assistant configuration. I got that information from my router. And while I'm in my router, I'm going to set this IP address as reserved for this device. If you don't do that, then your Broadlink device may get assigned a new IP address when your router restarts. Since the IP address is going to be written into your configuration file for home assistant, if that IP address changes, that's going to screw up your configuration and it ain't going to work. Reserving the IP address is pretty much a requirement. Every router is different, so I can't tell you exactly how to do it in yours, but I'm sure you can figure it out. That's what Google's for. Now that we have our bridge set up, it's time to start gathering some IR remote codes. So grab all your remotes and put them in a big old pile. Now there are a few different ways that you can get your codes from your remotes. I think the best way is using this awesome little program called Broadlink Manager. It's made by this guy. You can read more about it on the Home Assistant forums here, and you can download it here. It is a .exe file, so it only works on Windows. Download it, install it, and then click Scan. It should find your Broadlink device. If it doesn't, you could try adding it manually, but if Scan doesn't work, you may have another problem. If you didn't use your router to get the IP address and the MAC address, you can get it here too but you still need to go into your router to reserve that IP address for this device. Once you have your device connected to the Broadlink Manager, you can start learning codes. Click Learn New Code, then IR Code. Then press the button on the remote that you want to copy. The code won't show up until you let go of the button. So just hold it a couple seconds and then let go. You should get a bunch of text on the screen and then a pop-up that will ask you to name that code. It'll save all your codes with names. And you can even test them right here in the Broadlink Manager by clicking the send command button. You can see here that it gives you two codes, the raw code and the base 64 code. What we need for Home Assistant is the base 64. Now you repeat that process for every button on every remote control that you want to emulate. Usually that'll be something like power, volume, maybe input, mute. It can be any button on the remote. 
I think. I don't know about doing a series of buttons. Like if you wanted to hit two numbers to go to a specific channel. Maybe someone out there smarter than me can tell us how to do that. For my purposes, I grabbed codes for my projector, my surround sound receiver, a TV, and even some RGB LEDs that came with an infrared remote control. When you use the Broadlink Manager to grab your codes, it saves them all in this text file for easy copying and pasting. Once you've got all your codes gathered together, it's time to go to the configuration file in Home Assistant and add your Broadlink devices. To add these Broadlink devices, you create a new switch. The platform is Broadlink. Then you need the IP address and the MAC address. You can put the type if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary. Once you have that information in, save it, check your config, and then restart Home Assistant. When it comes back up, go to the Services tab and search for Broadlink. You should see two new services. You'll have a Learn service and a Send Command service. It uses the IP address of the Broadlink device to distinguish which device that service is going to use. That's obviously important if you have more than one device, like I do. Now, if you don't have Windows, or for some other reason, if you don't want to use the Broadlink Manager, this is how you can learn the codes for your remote buttons. On the Services page, you select the Learn Service. Then click Call Service. When you see the message in the corner that says the service was called, point your remote at the bridge and push the button you want it to learn. Again, I just held it for a few seconds and then let it go. After that, go to the Overview page and you should see a new notification box. You can't copy the code from that box, but it does let you know that it worked. Now go to the States page and search for Broadlink. You'll have a sensor entry there that'll contain the code for the button that you just pressed. Home Assistant isn't gonna save these codes, so you'll need to copy it from here and then paste it in another document or right away into your configuration file. Once you hit that Dismiss button on the notification on the Overview page, that code's gonna disappear. So if you didn't copy it, you'll have to do it again. I used this method initially to learn a bunch of codes before I discovered the Broadlink Manager. The Broadlink Manager is better, but it's good to know how to do it this way too, especially if you're anti-Windows. Wait a minute, I'm anti-Windows. The next step is to make some switches and automations to start making use of these codes that we've been collecting. The first way to do this is to make switches in your Broadlink entry in the configuration.yaml file. Under the heading for your device, make a new subheading called Switches. Then create a name for your switch, and this can be anything you want, but it does have to be in the entity ID format, so no spaces, just underscore. Next, give it a friendly name. This, of course, is what's gonna show up in your user interface. Then on the next line, you put Command On and the code for the On button. And after that, Command Off and the code for Off. You must have Command On and Command Off. If you only have one or the other, you'll get an error when you check your configuration. This is where you run into one of the inconveniences of using these hubs with Home Assistant. This format with Command On and Command Off works fine if your remote control has a button for On and a button for Off. But some remotes only have a power button that just toggles the power. What I did for those remotes, and I had a couple of them, was to use the same code for the Command On and the Command Off. It seems to work fine, but the problem is if you turn the TV on that way and then you turn it off manually or with the other remote, the switch in Home Assistant isn't going to be able to tell you exactly what the state of the TV is, whether it's really on or really off. So you may get in a situation where you look at the Home Assistant user interface and it says the TV is on, so you click the button to turn it off, when in actuality it was already off, and now you click the button to turn it on. You're going to have to come up with some other way to monitor the actual state of your TV or whatever it is. There's plenty of ways to do that, but that's a topic for another day. The command on and command off format does work pretty well for volume control though. When you press the on, the volume goes up. If you press on again, the volume goes up more. And if you press off, the volume goes down. You can also use the send a code service. So to give you an example of that, for my surround sound receiver and for my desk LEDs, I created an input select list in the configuration.yaml file, and they look like this. Then I created automations that use the send a code service. With this, I get a drop down menu in the user interface, and when I select one of those options, it sends the right code, and magic happens. Those automations look like this. After you've made the input select list, you need to save it, check the config, and restart Home Assistant before you make these automations. 
Just to show you another way to do it, I made an input Boolean to control the power for my surround sound receiver. It's a few simple lines in the configuration.yaml file, then an automation that uses the send a code service whenever I toggle that input Boolean. And it looks like this. Now it's demo time. This video would not be complete if I left out the RF function of the Broadlink RM Pro. The only reason to buy the Pro is if you want to control infrared and RF or 433 megahertz devices. Let me start by telling you, it is not easy. I tried every method that anyone would suggest and after four or five failures, I finally found one that worked for me. Hopefully you'll have better success with the more simple methods. But I'm going to show you the one that worked for me. Big thanks to Sam for sharing with me these step-by-step -step instructions because this is what I followed that finally worked. In order to get the Broadlink RM Pro to learn these 433 megahertz codes, you're going to need an Android device. This won't work on an iPhone. So on your Android device, go to the App Store and find the old Broadlink app. It was called eControl. Install it and go through the steps you need to to set it up. And you're also going to need the Broadlink RM plugin Lite. So install that too. When you open up the eControl app, click the plus in the upper right corner and then click add remote. Since I have the RM Pro and the RM Mini already attached to my network, they both show up here. Apparently they think we're going to memorize the MAC addresses to identify which device is which. I know the top one is the Mini, the bottom one is the Pro. So I choose the bottom one. After that, I get a page that looks like this. Now select RF socket. The next page looks like this. So click one of those buttons. That'll get you to the step where it's ready to learn a code. Now at the bottom, hit the button that says sweep frequency. Then you'll get this screen and you just got to do what it says. Activate the device that's sending the RF code that you want your bridge to learn. So for me, I press the button on the remote. If it worked, you'll get this screen asking if you want to learn that button. So then click OK. If you're using this to learn a door sensor code instead of a remote, then when it says press the button, that's when you need to activate the sensor. That probably means moving the magnet away from the sensor. Hopefully, your code from your sensor will broadcast long enough to be learned by the bridge. If it does successfully get your code, it'll then ask you to tap the button one more time. So again, tap the button or activate the sensor. If that part works, you've successfully learned the code. Congratulations, go celebrate. But there are still several steps you have to do to actually see that code and then to make it useful. See what I'm telling you? This is a major pain in the rump. Now click the back arrow until you get back to this main screen of the eControl app. You should now see a button for this RF socket. Fantastic. Push the little hamburger icon in the upper left hand corner. Then hit share. Now click share with other phones on this WLAN and then just click cancel. Now we're ready to open the other app that we downloaded, the Broadlink RM plugin Lite. First click device list and that'll import your Broadlink devices and then select your RM Pro. Now click the back arrow to get back to the main screen and then click the box for HTTP bridge and then the box for enable HTTP bridge. It'll ask you about a port, just click OK. Now on the HTTP bridge page, under where it says documentation, it'll show you the IP address of your device and the port. If you're lucky, you can click that. If not, just copy it into a browser. When you do that, you'll get a whole page of stuff. Scroll down a little bit and click where it says codes list. That'll take you to a page full of a bunch of incomprehensible gobbledygook. But in that mess is the code you need. This format should look familiar to you if you've been messing around with Home Assistant much because it's just JSON. Find where it says code and then in the next set of quotation marks, copy all the numbers and letters and whatever garbage is in there. Now, unfortunately, this still isn't the code you need for Home Assistant. You're gonna need to take this code and translate it 
into base 64. What? So go to Google and find a hex to base 64 converter like this. Put the code you just copied on the left and it'll spit out the base 64 code on the right. Now that is the code you need for Home Assistant. With that code in hand, you can set up automations or switches just like you did for the infrared devices. And it should work the same. Should, should. So after going through that whole mess of nonsense to try and get these RF codes, I sure don't feel like doing it again. Not when something like the Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmoda is so much easier to do. That's my humble opinion, but I'm not gonna be using this thing for RF codes. It works great for infrared, but for RF, I'm sticking with Sonoff. I could see the appeal of having one device, such as the Broadlink Pro, that can do RF and IR signals. But really, there isn't a financial benefit. Add up the price of the RF bridge and the Mini, it's about the same as the price of the Pro. And another thing to consider is that with infrared signals, your device that's emitting those signals needs to be in the line of sight of the device that's receiving those signals. So unless all of your IR devices are in one room, you're probably gonna want more than one broad link bridge. In that case, the Mini is gonna be the one you wanna go with. That is the broad link, IR, and kinda RF bridge. Very useful and effective for controlling your infrared enabled devices. A great addition to any smart home. As always, thanks for watching. Till next time, adios. Thanks again for watching. If you liked this video, then you'll probably like some of this other stuff. So click around, learn some things, build some stuff, have some fun, and then come back and tell us about it. And remember, if I can do it, you can do it.